My disclosures have not changed. So what I think is very interesting is, at least from an arthroscopic perspective, uh, there is a learning curve to uh, hip arthroscopy and certainly managing the hip capsule. Uh, our primary goal is really to do, do no harm, but I, I would hope that most people, as they get more comfortable with arthroscopy, need smaller holes to do their work. What can we learn from the shoulder? Well, the shoulder is certainly less constrained. It's more prone to instability. There's a lot of shoulder arthroscopy being done, but routine closure of these portals and even capsulotomies is just uh, uncommon. And it's uh, really select patients where you're actually closing the rotator interval and or doing select capsulorophies. Hip instability has become quite the hot topic. And I would just point out that on the iatrogenic spectrum, there uh, appears to be a risk if you section these lig ligaments. And so when you do a capsulotomy and or a capsulectomy, you may be destabilizing the joint even on a micro level. So the goals of an isolated portal approach really are access and safety, mobility and uh, efficiency, and then performance and reproducibility. So how about access and safety? Well, we learned a lot from uh, Dr. Thomas Bird's work uh, from approximately uh, 25 years ago, certainly Tom Sampson's work on the lateral aspect, but the anatomy really dictates where your portals go. And this is a seminal article. In turn, we learned a lot uh, out of Brian Kelly's work that migrating that anterior portal slightly laterally can be quite helpful in staying away from the hip flexor bundle and also gives you a better trajectory onto the rim for uh, labral repair. Ultimately, when you add a capsulotomy, what you're doing is changing the fulcrum on the instrument and certainly the soft tissue envelope and the type of patient, depending on the stiffness, determines how much of a fulcrum you need to alter. The issue is once you start connecting the dots, it really creates a lot of issues with managing uh, your instrumentation. And so the larger the hole you have, certainly you may end up with a lot more issues with fluid, uh, the scissoring of your instruments, cutting more of the ligaments than you would like, and potentially more instability issues. There may also be more pain associated with that. Uh, in our practice, we've seen a lot of risk with capsular sutures, especially the non-absorbable ones. Uh, you can certainly over tighten the joint. You can certainly section things you don't like. Uh, and ultimately in orthopedics, we have a principle and that's don't close puncture wounds. How about getting around? Well, certainly in 2020, what's uh, exciting is a lot of our instrumentation has gotten smaller. We have curved things and we have flexible items that we can use. The biggest game changer in our practice occurred approximately uh, two to almost three years ago when we uh, switched our fluid inflow uh, to uh, uh, going through a four and a half uh, millimeter cannula. So we didn't have to use the larger diameter cannulas to be able to get our distension uh, and fluid management. And this really allowed us to stay um, capsulotomy free for about 95% of our cases. So ultimately what we do is we actually enter in with a four or five, dilate up to a five, and then switch back to the four or five with fluid. And with curved instrumentation, uh, and percutaneous placement uh, is, has been uh, demonstrated by Thomas Bird. We've been able to do a lot. Uh, ultimately, what we're trying to do is create an effective space from a nominal space. And certainly within the peripheral compartment, what you can do is as you resect bone, you actually have a lot more room in which to work. A lot of resources are available. So if you're watching this talk, I would point out what's available on ViewMedi. Certainly there's some uh, iBooks as well as uh, lots of articles in arthroscopy techniques. Uh, we ultimately want perfect portals, and uh, what we found is, is that with our, our standard portals, which look like this, with our anterior lateral portal and our modified anterior portal, we're able to do approximately 90% of the work that we need to do and still be able to see what we need to see. Uh, we do add that posterior lateral portal for more posterior pathology. For optimal visualization through just the portal approach, we use uh, epi in our bags. Uh, we use paralytics. Uh, and we also use a fluid pressure that uh, uh, maximizes the visualization with hopefully minimizing fluid extravasation. So the pearls to success are really to optimize the angle of access. So in a deeper hip, you may be more distal in your portal placement. Deliver the anatomy into your field of view so you don't have to chase it with your scope. Avoid these fixed fulcrum devices, including uh, very rigid cannulas, and ultimately have a bailout. So if you do need to add that capsulotomy to be able to see, you can do that. What are the problems with just going with a portal? Well, certainly a lot of our instruments are fragile, so you have to make sure you're doing counts and checks on all the instruments that come in and out at the end of the case. Uh, your hands may be closer together, which can create a lot of conflict, which is difficult for a trainee. 
and also it may add some increased surgical time. So in summary, I would encourage uh, everyone to stay arthroscopic and have strategic portal placements placement uh, to respect the static and dynamic hip stabilizers by avoiding extensive capsulotomies and then using strategic capsulotomy and other visualization techniques and re recognizing these at-risk instability patients so we don't create more iatrogenic problems. Thank you.